Remember yesterday, they didn't know if they should chase the little bunny or if they should check out this object. Page 51. He turned. This new object interested him more than following binoculars. Watch out, he said. I'll take care of this. He slunk across the room slowly, muscles taut. That means tight. Eyes alert. When he was about six inches away, he stuck out his paw, closed his eyes, and batted at the object tentatively. I don't think he made contact. Get closer, I said. Chester's eyes popped open. Who's the cat here? He asked. I know what I'm doing. And he proceeded to bat the air three more times. What is it? I squealed as my throat contracted in fear. I don't know yet, but whatever it is, it's not alive. Oh boy. If I wait on you, we'll be here all night. I walked bravely to the object and sniffed it. <laughs> well, beats me. Chester came closer. After a moment, closer examined, he gasped. I jumped. I could feel my heart pounding in my chest. Harold! Chester blurred. What? What? It's... Yes, it's... What is it, Chester? It's a white zucchini. Chapter 5. Chester goes into his act. The next morning, I was awakened by a scream. Robert! Robert! Come down here right away! There's something wrong in the kitchen. For a moment, panic seized me. I thought she'd run out of dog food. But then I remembered the events of the previous evening. Miss Monroe came bounding down the stairs. Chester, Chester, I cried. Did you see Miss Monroe? His face had turned white. It's binocular, isn't it? No, he said calmly. It's shaving cream, you idiot. By now, the excitement in the kitchen was at full throttle. The table was covered with binoculars handiwork. There was white beans and white peas and white squash, white tomatoes and white lettuce and white zucchini. What can it mean, Robert? Mrs. Monroe was saying. I'm getting worried. One tomato is a curiosity, but this is unheard of. There must be something wrong with our refrigerator. That's it. It's turning all the vegetables white. But look, she said, I left these tomatoes on the windowsill, and they're white too. And this squash I left in the bowl on the table for them. At that moment, Peter and Toby came into the kitchen. Holy cow, what's going on? Hey, maybe it's a vegetable blight, Mom. Could that be, Robert? Did you ever hear of anything like that? Well, uh, no. Actually, that is, I've heard of blight, but nothing like this. Chester looked my way. This will take forever if we leave it up to them. Sometimes humans beans sometimes human beings can be so slow. I started to answer him, but he was headed for the table. What about what about that friend of yours in the agricultural department? Oh, Tom Criggins? Could we give could we call him and ask him if we're doing something wrong? It's DDT, Mom Peter interjected. I know about this stuff. It's because you buy vegetables that aren't organic. All vegetables are organic, Peter, Mrs. Monroe replied. That's not what my teacher says. See, Toby, I told you this would happen. They're using chemicals on our food, and if you're not careful, you'll turn white, too. Like Dad? Robert, could you take the shaving cream off your face? Oh, yes, of course. Where's my towel? I know I brought it down with me. For that matter, where's Chester? I'd seen him going towards the table, but I lost track of him listening to all the talk about DDT. I just hope they didn't use any of that stuff where they grew chocolate cupcakes. Pete, did you take my towel? Why would I take your towel, Dad? I don't shave. Just then, the door swung open. I could not believe my eyes. There was Chester, with Mr. Monroe's towel draped across his back and tied under his neck like a cape. I wonder what this cat's going to do. He's dressed up in a cape. Hmm. Hmm. That was strange enough, but his face, there was an expression that sent chills down my spine. His eyes were wide and staring. Mwah. The corners of his mouth were pulled back in an evil grimace. His teeth were bared and gleaming in the morning light. He cackled menacingly and threw back his head as if he were laughing at all. Ah, 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 ah. I thought he completely lost his mind. There's my towel. What's the matter, Chester? Were you cold? Miss Monroe bent down to take the towel from Chester before he could lay his hands on it. Chester flipped over onto his back, closed his eyes, and folded his hands, sorry, his paws over his chest. Now, if you do that, lay back and put your arms, fold them over your chest. You might look like 
something that would sleep in a coffin during the day and prowl the night. It was a hideous sight. He opened his eyes wide with his paws outstretched. He slowly lifted his head, his eyes glazed and vacant. Soon the upper half of his body followed all in one slow flow until he was in the sitting position. Hey, Dad, did you leave your brandy glass out last night? Chester's acting a little bit weird. Well, son, cats are funny creatures. I glanced at Chester. He wasn't laughing. Psst, Chester, what are you up to? I'm a vampire, you idiot. Can't you tell? I'm trying to warn them. Well, it's not working. You better think of something else. Chester frowned, apparently deep in thought. So you see, Toby, Mr. Monroe was explaining, all cats are as individual as all people. Maybe he just wants to get our attention. Isn't that right, kitty cat? Ordinarily, Chester would have left the room about, upon being called kitty cat. He was lost in thought. Come on, Chester, give me back my towel. Mr. Monroe moved towards Chester. Chester's. Ooh, that's a good picture of him. Eyes lit up. He looked at me and smiled. I sensed I was not going to like what he had in mind. I was toying with the notion of slinking under the table when Chester fixed me with his eyes. Now deep they were like black. Pools. I felt myself floating, lost in them, my will no longer my own. I felt an explicit urge to murmur, Yes, Master, when he walked slowly, steadily toward me. And as he drew near, I found myself unable to move. He stopped before me, never taking his gaze from me, and lunged. And, and, oh, that's all we have time for. What did Chester do when he lunged at poor old helpless Harold. Well, don't worry. You only have to wait till next week, Monday, to find out. Have a great day.